Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. As you can see, I've got my DCC guy shirt on again. So let's talk about something that is directly DCC related. Specifically, as the uh, title of this video indicated, I want to talk about different braking modes that are available in Soundtracks, Ekonomi, and Tsunami 2 decoders. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box, and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it and click all. Now in this video, I'm going to go ahead and give you a presentation first on how the different braking modes work in the different types of decoders. And then in the second part of the video, we're going to go ahead and move over to the uh, layout. And I've got a, uh, a Soundtracks uh, economy equipped locomotive on the track behind me. And I'm going to put it through the, uh, through the moves and show you the different braking modes, what they sound like, how they work, that kind of thing. And so for those of you that don't want to listen to the talking head part up front and find out how this works, you can just go ahead, use the scroll bar at the bottom of the video and run right on past and get right to seeing how the braking function works. And then you can come back and watch the how-to part of the video. But for now, I want to go ahead and go through, as I said, the information on how our, our braking works in these different decoders. First of all, I hope most of you are aware that Soundtracks produces two types of decoders. Their Economy decoder and the Tsunami 2 decoder. The Economy 2 is an economical decoder. What it really comes down to then is a matter of the functions and the sounds that are available on that decoder. It has a limited number of uh, functions, or let's not say limited, let's say a smaller set of functions available to you than the Tsunami 2 does. It also has a limited variety or range of sounds. With the diesel version, you're going to get your basic EMD sounds and your basic ALCO sounds and maybe GE. I can't remember all of the different ones that are available on that diesel decoder, but they're there. Now, with the Tsunami, they make a much wider range of uh, functions available to you, as well as various sound packages. So you can buy a decoder, a Tsunami 2 decoder, for the EMD sounds. You can buy one for the Alco. You can buy one for your Baldwin and GE. They, they come in different groupings like that. So you pick out that particular range of, of prime movers you want, and they're all available on that decoder. You just have to go in and change a CV setting to get the sound uh, that you want. Part of what is different about these is the braking functionality. Because on a economy decoder, you can get dynamic brakes. However, when you press the F4 button, which is the, it's the default button or the default function for the dynamic brakes, all it does is turn on a sound recording of a dynamic brake. You do not get active dynamic braking. That doesn't happen. Uh, as far as train brakes, the braking, active braking is, is limited to a combined locomotive or independent brake and the train brake. And let me explain the difference between independent brakes and train brakes. Now, if you're uh, out uh, operating a uh, a prototype switcher or something like that, doing a light move, whatever. When you apply the brakes uh, on that locomotive, that's what you're applying, the locomotive or the independent brakes. So it's independent of the rest of the train. So if you're rolling down the tracks with you know, a string of cars and you hit the brake and it's set for independent brake, that's all you're gonna get. The locomotive itself is gonna be what is stopping the train and itself as well. Now, with train brakes, that refers to setting the brakes on the entire train. All of the cars and the locomotives are all given braking capability. Now, because you're braking a whole train of cars and you have all that weight behind you, uh, train braking is typically slower 
at stopping the train than uh, an independent brake would be, mainly because with independent brakes, you're just using it to stop a, a single locomotive or string of locomotives and maybe a couple of cars if you're doing some switching. So if you have both independent and train braking capability on your decoders, then you can use that to come closer to what a prototype uh, operation might be, because you can use the locomotive brake or the independent brake or the train brake. With the economy, because it has a smaller feature set, it only comes with uh, a combined independent brake and a train brake function. So you just get one braking rate. But it is an active brake. If you hit the F11 button, and it's called F11 braking, uh, then it will actively bring the locomotive to a halt uh, at a given rate, and you can change that rate. Okay, There is a rate function CV, it's CV117. And you can, and I'll tell you in a minute how this works, but you can set the braking rate different from the deceleration rate that you set in CV4. But they work together, and I'll explain that in a minute too. Now, what about with uh, the uh, Tsunami 2 decoders? Well, I've already told you with the Tsunami 2, if you hit F4 to get dynamic braking, then it will be an active dynamic brake. It will slow the train without you changing the throttle setting. And you can control that with uh, CV116. So you can put in a uh, brake rate in CV116 just for dynamic braking. And it can be different from the other types of braking. You can use F11 to get independent braking at a much faster rate, or train brakes at a slower rate. And the thing is, you can set those independently. You can uh, control the independent brake rate using CV117. And you can control the train brake rate using CV118. So you've got CVs 116, 117, and 118 are there so that you can set different brake rates for the dynamic braking, for independent braking, and for train braking. So that's a whole lot to take in in just this one uh, presentation. So what I recommend you do, go to the Soundtracks website and go to the manuals area and download the reference documents, the technical manual and the user guide for the Economy and the Tsunami 2 uh, decoders. And they go into much greater detail than I'm going to be able to go into here with uh, how you set these different brake rates and control them. Now, one thing I just said was a minute ago, F11 controls your independent brake rate and your train brake rate. So how do you determine which one is going to be effective with a Tsunami 2 decoder? Well, what you can do is hit F12. And if F12 is turned on, you will be able to get the train brake rate. If F12 is turned off, then you will be able to get the independent brake rate. So it involves hitting two keys. You hit F12 to determine which brake rate you want, independent or train brake, and then you hit F11 to actually make it work. So whichever one you like is probably the one you're going to leave it set on most of the time. So how do you go about setting these various braking rates? Because they're all pretty much the same. So let me run through that very quickly. And I'll try not to go too quickly, though. The first thing to, th to know about this is that CV4, the deceleration rate, uh, is a big part of the setting for these brake rates. And it's used for all of these, for the dynamic brake, for the independent brake, and the train brake. Now, with the different brake rates, when you use CVs 116, 117, and 118 to give individual brake rates. First off, it uses CV4, the deceleration rate, as your basic brake rate. Then it either adds or subtracts values from that value. And that depends on what you enter into those CVs. So if you enter a value from 0 to 127 into CVs 116, 117, and 118, they will be, that value will be added to CV4. That's your basic deceleration rate. 
If you enter a value between 128 and 255, then a value uh, between 0 and 127 will be subtracted from uh, the basic CV4 uh, deceleration rate. So that's how it works. You can either increase or decrease your break rate relative to the setting you have in CV4. The value of CV4 plus the value in CV117 is less than zero, or it's equal to zero, or it's equal to 128, then you will get no braking effect at all. And that just works out because of the math. You end up with zero in all cases. So basically having a value of zero means you get no effect. Uh, because the default value is, uh, of, of these CVs is set at zero, you have to enter a value into CV4 and 116, 117, and 118 in order to activate these functions. Now, one thing that I highly recommend is that you just take and get a locomotive and an unoccupied section of track and use ops mode programming to start changing the values in CVs 116, 117, and 118 and, and experiment to see what kind of uh, braking rates you get with different values for these CVs 116, 117, and 118. And everything I've been talking about today deals entirely with diesels. So if you're into the steam locomotive end of it, that's another video. What I want to do now is move the camera in to uh, just in front of the layout, and I've got a, a locomotive set up there with an economy decoder in it, and I'll let you listen to the dynamic brakes, and then I'll show you uh, an example of stopping and restarting a train using uh, independent brakes and F11 braking. So let's do that. Okay, we've got a nice idle right there. And we'll hit the horn. Okay, and now let's uh, hear the bell. Now, since the dynamic braking doesn't have any real function, I'm just going to turn it on and let you hear the dynamic braking sound. Now, of course, on a tsunami decoder, if you have it set up properly, you would get active braking um, with the dynamic braking function turned on. With the economy, it's just there for the sound effects. Okay, let me go ahead and crank this up, and I will use uh, F11 braking to bring this locomotive to a stop. And the first thing you'll hear is the squeal of the uh, brakes as the uh, uh, locomotive starts to slow down a bit, and then it will slowly come to a stop. Although at this point, I did not set a very large value into CV117, so it'll probably come to a fairly quick stop. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. Now at this point, you'll note that the uh, prime mover is still running at the uh, rate of speed at which it was going when I threw it into braking mode. So I had it at, oh, a value of 21 uh, out of 100 here on a Digitrex throttle. So I'm going to put it in reverse and hit F11 to release the brakes, and it will go ahead and return to that pre-braking uh, uh, pre uh, speed. Okay, I released it. It's moving fairly quickly, isn't it? Hit the brake again. And release it again. And stop it again. And up to this point, I haven't made any changes to the throttle setting at all. It's still on step 21 here.
Well, that's about it for today's video. I, uh, I hope that everything I, I laid out for you came across clear. Uh, again, uh, download a copy of the manual for the Economy or for the uh, Tsunami 2 decoders. Be aware that they have both a user's guide and a technical guide. The user's guide is probably the most useful one for understanding how everything works. The technical guide uh, basically gives you information on each CV and how to set it. Uh, so for, for a user, it, uh, understanding of how it works, go ahead and take a look at that user guide for the uh, Economy or the Tsunami 2 diesels and it will give you a pretty good perspective on how these work. Uh, take it easy, have a great weekend, and we'll see you here on Monday with another video from the DCC Guide. Bye now.